The objective today is to identify connections between the ability to program and the ability to solve problems. So as we begin this programming unit, I want you to keep an eye on everyone's zone of proximal development, also known as ZPD. People in class will have a different ZPD than you, and that's going to be okay. It says here the zone of proximal development, often abbreviated, is the difference between what a learner can do without help and what he or she can do with help. It is a concept introduced yet not fully developed by Soviet psychologists, and I have no idea how to say that name, but this goes back um, a long time, okay? Uh, the pick on the next slide says it all for me, and I want you to um, keep this in mind because in programming, some of you might be ready for more than others. I'll try my best to walk that thin line, but don't let me hold you back, though. If you are ready, go for it. Program away. And here's a great picture to understand what I'm talking about. Your goal may be to program a game or program a website to produce some amazing content by using some sort of computer language to do so. That may be your goal, but there is um, a part, there is this line, it's called the zone of proximal development, that you need to cross in order to get to that goal. And if you're already doing this on your own programming games and websites, well, I will not waste your time. You may definitely um, go and create. But for the um, rest of the students who m may have never even seen programming before, let's be patient and kind to them, okay? My think right share on this slide says, what would you like your goal to be? And some of the options I'm thinking is maybe you want to program a website, a game, like I've said before, or maybe some sort of software that has um, a use. I'm thinking of maybe accounting software. Maybe you program an app um, for your phone, some idea that you have for an app. That'd be a great idea. You can make that your goal, and then we'll all work together um, to get you to that goal. So, have you ever had an English teacher walk you through the importance of precision of details in your writing? For me, it was seventh grade, and I remember this so vividly. The teacher wanted us to write down steps to making an ice cream sundae, and we were given all sorts of choices. Um, in terms of toppings and and things like that so the class we were so excited because the teacher said we can eat it in the end um, but when you did your directions if you didn't put co cone or bowl down um, then the ice cream immediately went onto the table so the teacher just demonstrated uh, strictly following the instructions us students gave him um, he just followed those, and there was some crazy results from that. Now, some students wrote terrific instructions, and they were able to eat their ice cream sundae, um, in, not in a messy way at all, and that was wonderful for them. For the rest of us, including myself, we walked away with the lesson of knowing that instructions matter and details matter. Now, in elementary school, I had my fourth and fifth graders write the directions for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and then what we did is we took that and turned it into lines of code. And then I had this contest where whoever had the most lines of code um, won. Now, that's not the best approach to professional programming. In fact, you don't want just a ton of lines of code Anytime I talk about instructions, I am reminded of these funny baby memes I've seen around. So I just wanted to share these with you. So there are three important concepts to begin thinking about programming. Precision is the first. Programming languages must be precise because there can be no ambiguity in the instructions to a computer. Uh, the second one is unique terms. Programming terms that have synonyms would be um, confusing, so you don't want to do that. So be careful with what you name your functions. And programming languages or programming should be completely predictable. So there must be only one way to interpret a command, which results in a single repeatable action. Your think right share on this slide is describe the features of a programming language that make it different from the language you typically use in everyday life. Explain why a programming language must be created in this way. So human language is fraught with ambiguities and assumptions that machines simply cannot understand. When you formalize language or commands that describe actions, you're making a kind of code. This is also necessary for computers, which are simply machines that can perform a number of different tasks.
In order to write instructions for them to do something, you must agree on the code, and each action must have a precise, unambiguous meaning. This is a programming language, and my example of myself over here is if my wife asks me to do something, that those instructions need to be very clear or I could easily mess up the task. And maybe I mess things up on purpose, so I am not asked to do that task anymore. But regardless, in programming, you must be very precise with what you're asking the computer to do. So the friendship algorithm. If you're a fan of the show The Big Bang Theory, um, this was on an episode. You may be eager to program, but recognize that the course is about principles of programming, and we want to establish some of the good thinking habits that people who are good at programming seem to have naturally. There's nothing natural about it. These ways of thinking, these insights, are learned and practiced. So if you're very interested in programming, I hope we'll have the AP Computer Science A course next year, in which we'll learn extensively how to program in Java. So algorithm, a precise sequence of instructions for processes that can be executed by a computer and are implemented using programming languages. Your think right share on this is in your own words, what is an algorithm? Another think right share, what's the difference between high and low level languages? Well, low level programming language is a programming language that captures only the most primitive operations available to the machine. A high-level programming language would be a programming language with many commands and features designed to make common tasks easier to program. Any high-level functionality is encapsulated as combinations of low-level commands. So, number one, different algorithms can be developed to solve the same problem. Number two, different programs can be written to implement the same algorithm. And the think right share on this slide is what is uh, the algorithm to the left accomplishing? So here's an interesting way to look at baking a cake. And as we're at the end of the lesson, we're in an IB school, so I want us to spend some time reflecting like the other IB students do. So just choose one of these questions to answer. And here's your DOL. What is the problem this algorithm is solving? And number two, what details could the programmer be missing in this algorithm?